Hello everyone, Adam here, and welcome to the 9th Gameplay Review UK Community Challenge video of 2020. Each month, the Crook community has been creating stock replicas of aircraft and spacecraft chronologically through the decades to further our understanding of aeronautics and engineering, not to mention honing our skills in Kerbal Space Program. This month's video focuses on the Atlas rocket, and particularly, its one and a half stage to orbit design. Historically, a lot of people have found recreating this stage rather tricky in KSP, and hopefully, by the end of watching this video, anyone will be able to understand and recreate this if they want to. The first Atlas missile, known as the SM-65 Atlas, was the first operational intercontinental ballistic missile that was developed by the United States. The first full-scale prototype of the Atlas missile took its first flight on the 11th of June 1957. The test model had no sustainer engine or separable stages, but fully operational Atlases would be flying by the end of the decade. Its primary role was to place a nuclear warhead into a ballistic trajectory that could essentially hit a target anywhere on Earth, but particularly any target in the Soviet Union via the Arctic Circle. Thankfully, these missiles were never used in anger, and as a byproduct, the US had a bunch of missiles sitting around essentially capable of lofting small payloads into orbit, and potentially much more with the addition of a second stage. Not to mention that Atlas missiles have quite a long fire preparation time, making them more suited to space travel than retaliative, mutually assured destruction anyway. Before we look at some of the payloads it carried, let's take a look at how it would get itself to orbit or at least halfway around the world in the first place. Firstly, these rockets needed to be as reliable as possible, and when Atlas was conceived, people were not 100% confident about lighting rocket engines in the vacuum of space, so they opted to have all engines ignite on the ground, initially ruling out a second stage. With this philosophy, Atlas needs three engines, not just the one main sustain engine, to have enough thrust to weight ratio to lift it and the weight of its initial fuel off the pad, and gather enough speed to get it into orbit. But once a lot of the propellant was expelled, and the rocket was reaching the edge of space, this extra thrust was not needed, and the extra two engines just became more excess weight that was better off ditched, hence the one and a half stage. Now really, there are a lot more variables to take into consideration for this, but for now our main focus is the separation itself, so let's move on to some footage of Atlas separation tests. In this test, gravity is drawing the separated stage away from the Atlas part that is being held in place. During a real separation, it will be the Atlas's sustainer engine that will propel the rocket away from the separated stage, but the effect is much the same. Just like KSP, the main trick here is to make sure no parts get caught up or snag during separation. And here is a rare view of an actual Atlas half-stage separation. I say rare as back in the early parts of the space age, most video was still recorded onto film and needed to be physically recovered somehow. Plus, these were military-grade missiles after all, meaning the US didn't exactly want everyone knowing how they worked and this is a more secure method than simply broadcasting images across space, as the Soviets found out during Luna 9. Moving on to KSP, and like I said before, historically a lot of people have found recreating the Atlas half stage rather tricky. Now I say historically because I think stock KSP has enough parts now to be able to recreate this stage rather easily and in many different ways. However, there was a time when this proved to be more difficult. Without going into too much detail here, let's just say that in KSP, you really do want to become used to and even rely on part symmetry. However, due to the size of their collision boxes, no central and thus symmetry enabled decoupler could decouple and then pass through an engine large enough to lift an atlas without exploding. So the only way to build the Atlas half stage was to asymmetrically build around the central engine off of one of the side engines, which is a lot trickier to build and to keep stable, since the whole stage is anchored off to one side of the craft too. I think Mulbin may have been the first to build a working stock Atlas way back in 2013, but since I can no longer find this craft to show people, I'll show one of my older versions here quick for people to see. Mulbin's was much nicer in my opinion, but at least mine is a little simpler, 
and so easier to see what's going on. I'll also quickly show my Mercury Atlas, as to me, this is the last point KSP timeline-wise, where this method was required to build an Atlas, and it will also bridge the gap between the ICBMs shown before, and the submitted craft files, as they will all have upper stages. The Atlas here that sent Strong Glenn into orbit, to me is the perfect example of how a single Atlas missile can just about get a small payload into orbit. This craft is only coming up to a couple of years old by this point, but in that comparatively short time, we have had a lot more parts added to KSP, not to mention the second Breaking Grounds DLC. So the year is 2020, and we now have plenty of decouplers and structural cylinders, and even more recently custom flags, so now we have many ways to totally envelop the main engine's physics box with room to spare. So a symmetrically connected centre is now possible, I hope this intro brings everyone up to speed with the KSP Atlas stage and a half saga, and now we can move on to this month's community submissions, which are of course all replicas of spacecraft which were launched into space via these old style Atlas missiles, so keep an out for the half stage. I'm using Bullshoot's Latin names craft here as an example, as his entry was too late to qualify, but I thought I'd squeeze his in if I could, so there you go mate. By chance the free craft we are going to focus on were submitted in order of launch date, so we will certainly go with that. We have Yukon's Block 3, Space Labs Mariner 4 and Space Guy 90's Surveyor 1. I was going to critique them too, but I'm telling you right now that these are some damn fine craft. All three of you guys should be super proud of yourselves, and I'm sure any extra details can be picked up on in the comments section below, so let's begin. Block 3, created by Yukon. Block 3 was the Ranger program's third iteration of Lunar Reconnaissance probes, and the second of which, Ranger 7, was the first to successfully accomplish its mission when it became the first spacecraft to collide with the moon, whilst sending back a photo every five seconds in an attempt to gain high-resolution images of the lunar surface for the prospecting of future landing sites. It was launched on the 28th of July 1964, and took about three days to reach the moon or Moon in this case. Note that the Atlas missile cannot reach the Moon on its own, so an Agena upper stage is used for the extra kick the spacecraft needs to get there, and in fact, all of this month's submissions will feature an Agena upper stage. Here is some of the footage sent back to Earth from Ranger 7 before it smashed into the Moon. Mariner 4 created by Spacelab. Mariner 4 was the first probe to successfully fly by Mars and was launched on the 28th of November 1964. It was supposed to be a dual flyby mission with Mariner 3, but it seems as though Mariner 3's fairing failed to separate, and before this could be resolved, the solar powered probe ran out of battery power. Mariner 4, however, was a total success. It took about 8 months to reach Mars and it became the first spacecraft to take a close-up picture of a planet. Or oh, other than Earth, of course. It's as hard to appreciate today that before Mariner 4, this was our map of Mars, and people were still arguing over how many canals were on its surface. But after Mariner 4 sent back these photos, people started to realise that Mars was less like the Earth and more like the Moon. Survey 01 created by Space Guy 90. Surveyor 1 was launched on the 30th of May 1966, and by this point the US was getting pretty confident with their Atlas Agena assembly. So confident, in fact, that they landed the Surveyor probe on the moon on their first attempt. Unlike the first two craft that only needed the extra Agena stage to get them out into space, this craft needed a further two stages. One being the extra rocket motor used to reduce a lot of the relative velocity just before landing, and the last being the spacecraft itself, which had its own thrusters for the actual touchdown. Surveyor 1 wasn't the first probe to successfully land on the moon, but it was the first to do so with a controlled descent, mastery of which would be crucial for the later Apollo missions. So, there we have it. Like I said, all of these replica craft are great, but I invite you guys to share with us in the comments section 
which one you thought had the best Atlas rocket. And we will include Bullshoot too, so he doesn't feel left out. Thank you for watching this video. Remember, this process is still ongoing, so if you do enjoy making replica stock craft in Kerbal Space Program, and would like to participate in these challenges, then please do join our Discord to get the lowdown. Alternatively, you can just join to see what we are getting up to. Please keep in mind that these videos take more and more time and effort to produce, so it is more important than ever that you guys consider hitting the join button or becoming a Patreon. Failing that, please do hit the like button in the hope that YouTube will promote this video to others. Thanks again, and see you later.